coming to the part of the master class uh, we you know marketed you and said we getting Sanjeev Vichindani we've got some young entrepreneurs who have actually uh, sent in videos and uh, uh, what the, what it is that they would like to ask you it is if I may say so free advice so we come now to the master class section I'm going to give you my phone I've selected seven of them the first one is by Ashwini you can just press play Hi Sanjeev, this is Ashwin, co-founder and CEO of CustomFit.ai and my question to you is this, do you think websites can be the number one salesperson or it can be the number one growth engine? Uh, because uh, you know it is a 24-7 marketer, how can we unleash its power to convert into the number one growth channel? Thank you. So look, uh, it all depends on the stage of the market and whether the customer will buy only looking at the website. Right? We know that in Nokri, if we start selling to HR managers only on the website and ask them to pay using the credit cards, uh, chances are we will be one tenth or one twentieth the size that we are, simply because some of our solutions are expensive. Right? Uh, some of our solutions are, you know, so, so, so HR uh, recruiters may want to meet a salesperson, right? Uh, discuss, negotiate, understand, get trained, get a proposal, get an invoice, and then pay by check. So actually, in Nokri, um, you know maybe 95, 98% of our corporate payments come in through checks where the salesperson collects, okay. right? Now that is that's driven by customer behavior. Most HR managers do not have corporate credit cards. When they do, they will not put a 20 lakh charge on it without first understanding the product face to face. Mm -hmm. So can websites be? Answer is yes. It depends on the customer, the market, uh, and a, a few other things. So B2B, you know, large checks, large transaction size may or may not be. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Right? But B2C, it can be. Yeah, and it is. It has been. So it depends. Okay. Hi, my name is Ashwini Jain and I'm the co-founder of Open Talk. So thank you, Sanjeev, for taking this masterclass to help us. My question is around this constellation of companies which Info has Info Edge has invested in. Would really love to know that what are some of the core parameters that you look at when you're investing in a startup and what are some of the things that you would want the startup to ensure before they reach out for investment to InfoEdge. Thank you. Yeah, so I think we've covered this in the program, but yeah. uh, some of this, but you know, it um, largely depends on uh, are you solving an unsolved problem? Are you innovative first mover? Uh, are you, is there a lot of competition? Uh, you know, what's the level of commitment and competency of the entrepreneur? Any issues around integrity that's negative? Uh, some sort of visibility or idea on how you'll make money, right? Scalability. How you'll make money, right? Mm. Uh, and then how will you make scaled up money? Yeah. Okay? Obviously both are important, right? So these are some of the things, but I think startups can just to reach out to us anytime. Uh, yeah. it's, and it's never too early for to have a conversation. Were you always uh, interested in entrepreneurship and the markets? You understand the markets, Dambar. Uh, which markets? Public markets as well. You understand private and public markets. So I'm not. I'm a very bad stock market investor. <laughs> I've always lost money in the stock market. You're so a negative return. I'm sure. <laughs> so I stopped investing. I mean, for ah. 20 years I didn't invest. Okay. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, but you understand it. Uh, well, look, uh, I understand investors' concerns regarding our company. Mm. And so, how, what okay. to disclose, how to disclose, tell the truth, you know, Correct. and so on and so forth. Always be transparent. Those are yeah. fundamental principles, right? But that does not mean I'm a good stock market investor. <laughs> we, just, we just run a company and we, we, we tell about it, right? And here's the next one. This is from a lady. Yeah. Hi, Sanjeev. Uh, my name is Gayatri. I'm the founder and CEO of Arca Research, which is a healthcare technology company. Uh, uh, thank you for taking the master class today and giving us an opportunity to ask your question. Uh, my question to you is, uh, you being one of the first Indian entrepreneurs in the digital space, I'm wondering what are the challenges that you faced in terms of scaling the company and what are your suggestions for an entrepreneur like us? Thank you. Well, the challenges that we faced early on, it was a different environment. We, we, we had lack of capital, lack of infrastructure, small market, very few customers, keep costs low, couldn't pay a salary, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, attraction of talent also was a problem. There was very little uh, programming talent, tech talent available with experience on the, on the internet. So those are all the typical challenges that early movers face in an infant industry. Yeah. Right. The flip side of that was also there was no competition. Hmm. So we were able to, you know, survive and break even and make a profit even on uh, this small market uh, with under resourced. 
simply because we were the only ones. Correct. Right? But we were solving an unsolved problem. So the advice I'd give you is stay close to the customer. So successful businesses are built on deep customer insights. Mm. Right? Deep customer insights about what? About unsolved problems. So yeah. let me tell you the story of Zomato. So where did the idea of Zomato come from? Deepinder and Pankaj had graduated from IIT. Deepinder in 2005, Pankaj in 2007. And uh, they were both working for Bain Consulting in Gurgaon. Yeah. Bain was his office of, you know, maybe 50, 70 people, uh, mostly unmarried, very often male, many of them living away from home. Would so not no get, tiffin? No tiffin, no lunch from home. Tiff. Often at a cafeteria, right, uh, yeah. which would not serve food. Uh, you could bring your own food and have it. To make life easier for the employees, the admin team had got a file folder of all the restaurants that would deliver and mm. their takeaway menus. But Dipinda said, you know, at one o'clock there's a long line to access this file folder. So he said, I used to get impatient. I came in on Saturday, I scanned all the menu cards <laughs> and put them on my office page, on my, on my personal page in the office intranet. Huh. Just two days later, the IT infra guy came to me and said, what's going on? Why is all the internal traffic going to your homepage, personal page? So that's when the penny dropped. And I got the insight that aggregation of menus has got value. People want to see menus. <laughs> so I went around on weekends picking up takeaway menu cards of restaurants in Delhi. We got 800 restaurants, we launched. And traffic began to come. It was based on that insight that, that menus have value. Uh, where did the idea of Nokri come from? I used to observe in my last job at HMM, you know, I was sitting in the open marketing hall, yeah. there were 10, 12 of us, that every time the office copy of Business India would come in, it's the open office, I could see what's going on. Uh, everybody would read it from the back because in those days there used to be 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads at the back. They would not read the articles, they would read the appointment ads and they would talk about it. And that is the insight I said. People are really interested in knowing about jobs, whether or not they're looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. And they're always talking about it. They're always benchmarking what's going on in the market. So if somebody were to, when I saw the internet for the first time in 1996, I said, listen, let's just get jobs from newspapers and magazines around the country and put them up and see what happens. And traffic began to come. So that customer insight is really important. So stay close to the customer. Mm. Get that customer insight of an unsolved problem. You will know what product to launch or what feature to launch. Whether you're going the right way or not. What feature to launch. Okay, because what you want to do is get customers without spending money. Mm. If you get customers without spending money, it means your business has got legs. You will get investor money. The problem also is when you reach scale, you stop listening so much to your customers, right? Isn't I, that the big mistake? That, that, that happens. You know, people, uh, as the organization grows larger, you're cut off. Yeah. Because you're managing the organization more than... Then you're like, we telling you what you need. As I think you're managing the organization because you've got large teams. Yeah. Rather than, uh, you know, staying in touch with the customer. The next one is uh, quite Linda. I like even female entrepreneurs. <laughs> Hi, my name is Linda. I'm the co-founder of Headway.ai. We are the world's first smart unified talent platform. Um, my question to Sanjeev is, um, I would like to know what are the uh, winning top three GTM strategies for a new age HR tech company like us, uh, one in India and uh, two globally. So look, uh, I don't know top three or what, but I think get your first customer in. To get your first customer in, you should go out and make sales calls yourself. So entrepreneurs and founders, even if they're techies and product guys, should make sales calls themselves early on. Because that's what keeps you grounded in touch with the customer, you know what to produce. Hmm. So make sales calls, go, figure out, somehow get into you know, HR heads rooms or, you know, and say, look, this is a different thing, this is the benefits, now give me your feedback. Now, if it is a easy thing to adopt, it's one thing, if it's only complex to adopt for the client organization, you will know you have a, a, a big challenge in your hand that look, it's an enterprise sale, uh, I've got to persuade so many people, uh, it's a long sales cycle, how am I going to do it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, that, that's just one way to do it. Uh, just go out and make sales calls. The other is to look, uh, if, it, if you want to go to an overseas market, it may be a good idea to sell into the India subsidiary yeah. of the overseas company first. Mm. Because if they adopt it, then it can go overseas. I've seen companies do that. The next question is from Ankit. This guy? Yeah. Hi, Sanjeev. My name is Ankit. I'm the CTO of Gentrack Solutions. I have a question specific for platform-based products for India market. While developing such products, what are the few metrics that uh, you know early stage team should focus on so that they don't get uh, uh, misled by false metrics? 
So look, if it's a B2C platform, I think the first thing you got to figure out is are you getting consumer traffic? Uh, and is there word of mouth and buzz? Uh, and Always is, the same, right? And, 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 and is it coming without you having to address? Hmm. And if a guy comes, does he come back again on his own? Right? Repeat. If, if he comes back again on his own, you know you're onto something. Hmm. Because he liked what he came for and he's now coming back again. Second is, what's he doing on your platform? Is he doing something useful? Is he, is he something that's valuable to him? Something that's valuable to you? Right? Uh, and, and you know, if he's doing that, then you know that something good is happening. Do you think it makes sense to initially go overseas? So B two B SaaS, uh, you know, companies, uh, the market is small in India. Yeah. Right. Now, the, it change? now, now, if you're running a an unfunded company, bootstrap company, mm. you don't have the pressure to grow so big, so so yeah. as long as you're breaking even, making money, growing, organic growth, all that. Uh, but if you raise VC money, now the thing about venture capitalists is that there's a fund. The fund has a life of 8 years, 10 years, 12 years. They need to invest and get the money back uh, because they have to give it back to the LPs. So let's say a fund invests in year 2 of its fund, right? It's a 10 year fund. Uh, by year 7 or 8, they'll start getting very anxious uh, and they'll want to exit. Essentially, you're there for 6 years. And therefore, you will be pressured to grow. Correct. And to find that growth very often, you have to go to overseas markets if you're running a B2B SaaS company. Those markets are larger. Yeah. But bigger, they're also yeah. riskier and more expensive to, Correct. to sell to. Sanjeev Bhiktanani, before I end this interview, do you prefer bootstrap companies, funded companies, or that doesn't matter? So we invest early on, uh, very often with the first check-in. So until we invest, the company is often bootstrap or at best has got a few angels. Uh, we love bootstrapping entrepreneurs. I think bootstrapping is great discipline. I think it teaches you a lot. I know, so we bootstrapped Nokri for three years before we raised venture capital. I know we would not have survived that meltdown if we had not bootstrapped. It gave us fiscal discipline. It taught us how to actually sell and make money and break even because we had to break even to survive. You told me, you, and you were gracious enough to tell us the anti list that you know you didn't decide not to invest in because that time was not right. So today when you meet Bhavish Agarwal of Ola... We, we, we joke about it. Or when you meet the Bansals of Flipkart... So, I, so I had not interacted with Bansals. The, the, the PowerPoint had come to me from ha. somebody else. So, they, so, so that was safe. Ha. But Bhavish and I talk. I mean, we, we joke so about it. So you joke about it. Yeah, yeah, we joke about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. With that, uh, Sanjeev Bhiktandani, I'd like to thank you. And thanks so much thank for you this so much. Thank you so much.